sour as a lemon. One evening, Rebecca was returning back to Tidmouth Sheds after another day's work. As she puffed onto the turntable, she could hear the familiar sound of grumbling coming from inside the shed. Wonder what's going up his funnel today, she said to herself. And let me tell you, complained Gordon, in all my years I have never felt more insulted. You'd think that after the thin clergyman published his books and told the world of our railway, and especially me, that people would be able to recognize me whenever I come by. Gordon, you're just being a twit, argued James. This is the first time this has happened in decades. All the more reason to be cross about it, James, retorted Gordon. What's all this about? whispered Rebecca to Edward. A young passenger confused Gordon for Thomas today, said Edward. <laughs> How's that even possible? chuckled Rebecca. They don't look anything alike. Exactly why it's so disgraceful, bellowed Gordon. Can't they just look at our ruddy numbers? A lot of children think Thomas, Gordon, and I all look alike because we're the same color, explained Edward. You'd be surprised how often Henry and Emily get confused for each other. Looky, that'll never happen to me, said Rebecca. I'm the only yellow engine here. You're forgetting Bill and Ben, chuckled Edward. Well, they're not even the same size as me, replied Rebecca. I don't think I'll be confused for those two anytime soon. There's also Duncan, added Edward. Who is Duncan? asked Rebecca, puzzled. He's an engine on the Scarlowy Railway, explained Edward. He's mainly a goods engine, but sometimes he takes passengers as well. I've never seen him when I stop at Crovin's Gate, thought Rebecca. He must really enjoy pulling trucks. More likely he's had his coaches taken away, said Edward. Well, it's a shame, replied Rebecca. Did he do something wrong? It's more that he's quite the complainer, chuckled Edward. His attitude can be quite the handful at times, but he does mean well, and he is a hard worker. Sure, he's not that bad, said Rebecca. Maybe I'll see him soon. We can be a pair of yellow friends. Edward chuckled and soon drifted off to sleep. The next morning, Rebecca arrived at Croton's Gate with her usual commuter train. As she stopped at the platform, something caught her eye. Standing at the narrow gauge platform was a small yellow engine. Excuse me, she asked. Are you Duncan? Can you not read my nameplate, you numpty? Came the rather blunt reply. Rebecca didn't quite know what a numpty was, but she wasn't going to let that stop her. Well, my name's Rebecca, she continued. I can't help but notice that we're the same colour. Ah, you're talking mints, retorted Duncan. My yellow scabby and dull, Disney shine like the sun like yours do. Well, I think both of our paint jobs are nice, said Rebecca, trying not to let Duncan's attitude bother her. Would you like to be friends? Do you like to grounge? asked Duncan. Uh, I'm not quite sure what a grounge is, replied Rebecca, puzzled by Duncan's rather colourful vocabulary. Do you like to grumble, you tube? asked Duncan again. Uh, not really, answered Rebecca. I haven't really got anything to complain about. Then away and bile your head, retorted Duncan. If you can't grumble, then you can't be a friend of mine. Oh, uh, I see, said Rebecca sadly. Nice talking with you, Duncan. Just then, the guard's whistle blew, and Rebecca puffed away, feeling quite dejected. Later that day, Rebecca had stopped at Wellsworth with her return train to Knapford. As she waited at the platform, Edward arrived with his connecting train. Hello, Rebecca. How's... I know that look. What's the matter? It's that Duncan, she replied, and recounted her earlier conversation with him. He's just like a sour little lemon. I suppose that's one way to put it, said Edward. Don't let this bother you, Rebecca. Duncan's always been a hard engine to get along with. All the same, replied Rebecca. I wish someone would talk some sense into him. Just then the guard's whistle blew, and Rebecca left the station. A few minutes later, Edward departed for Brendam, still thinking about Rebecca's dilemma. He tried to come up with an idea to talk some sense into Duncan, but he couldn't think of anything. It's a shame, he said to himself. It'll take a lot more than a simple telling off to get through to him. Then, as Edward pulled into the station, the solution became clear. Of course! Why didn't I think of them before? There, waiting in the sightings, were the very engines. That evening, Duncan was at Croven's Gate, waiting to depart with his evening train. As he waited, he heard the sound of a standard gauge engine's whistle in the distance. Probably that Nyafra Becca again, he said to himself. 
If she goes on again about how she wants to be my pal, I'll tell the lassie just what I think. What dinner you tell us in, you wee munter, came a voice. Duncan looked over to see Donald and Douglas standing at the standard gauge platform. What are you two doing here? asked Duncan bluntly. And who do you think you are to speak to me like that? Oh, you'd wish you wee dirty, retorted Donald. We're only here with our slow goods train. Now how about you tell us what you mean by telling Rebecca she cannot be your friend, you wee scunner? asked Douglas. Aye, the lassie's just a hurry, scoffed Duncan. If she can't ground you, she can't be my friend. Ah, when you chew my tender, you reprobate, replied Donald crossly. Ain't nothing wrong with being Rebecca's friend, you hear? I you minger, added Douglas. Just cause she can't get about anything doesn't mean you can't enjoy the company. And why should I be a friend anyway, continued Duncan. I didn't have to be everyone's friend, so why is this an exception? You bunkers out the window, you honky bampot, replied Douglas. We can't blame you if you didn't want to be friends with James or Diesel. They kind of go a day without being a scunner in some way. So if you can tell us one thing Rebecca did that makes her a goon on the level of those two, then we'll lead you to it. Aye, and to add to that, continued Donald, if Rebecca can't be your friend, then how can you be friends with Rusty when the laddie doesn't ground you about anything? Duncan tried to come up with a response, but try as he might, he couldn't think of anything. James, I think we stopped the poor twally, Dougie, laughed Donald. Aye, do you think he may have to admit defeat, Donald? replied Douglas. Ah, bolt your rockets, shouted Duncan crossly. The twins laughed and left Duncan to grumble to himself. The next day, Rebecca pulled into Croven's gate like usual. She saw Duncan standing opposite her platform with his train. To Rebecca's surprise, he looked rather solemn. Is everything all right, Duncan? she asked, concerned. Dinner fast you sell, Rebecca, replied Duncan plainly. I'm just feeling a bit wabbit. Oh dear, said Rebecca, but you don't look like a rabbit to me. No rabbits, Rebecca, retorted Duncan. What I mean is... You missed your sale last night, and I'd just like to say that I'm sorry for being such a gulp to you. You didn't have to ground to be my friend. Although Rebecca didn't quite discern everything Duncan was saying, she could understand that he was sorry. Thank you, Duncan, she smiled. Are you saying you'd like to be friends? Oh, well with you, Rebecca. I'm back affronted enough already, said Duncan. But aye, if you'd like to be my friend, I kind of ground you about that. <laughs> well... Okay to that, giggled Rebecca, much to Duncan's embarrassment. You know leave me be, he replied, trying to change the topic. Did you have a job to do, lassie? I'll leave soon, Duncan, smiled Rebecca. No need to worry, but perhaps I'll see you soon. Perhaps, said Duncan. I'll try to the ground as much next time. Both engines laughed, and soon the guard whistles blew. Farewell, Duncan, chimed Rebecca. Bye for new, lassie, replied Duncan simply. Rebecca and Duncan are good friends now, and they always say hello and tell each other the news when they have the chance. Duncan still complains now and then, but Rebecca doesn't mind. She's just glad it doesn't stop her from being his yellow friend.